I used to only swipe right for guys over six feet, but my standards have lowered a bit. My name is Jill. I am 26 years old and I'm from Wolcott, Connecticut. About two and a half years ago, I was on vacation with my three best friends in Mexico. And on one of our last nights there, I went out onto my hotel balcony to make a phone call. And I went to go sit up on the railing and ended up falling three stories down onto the ground below. I broke several vertebrae in my back and ended up with a spinal cord injury and paralyzed from the waist down with no ability to move or feel anything. Thank you for you know touching briefly on how everything happened. Uh, I know a lot of young people our age, that's the first thing that always pops into our head. I mean people in general, um, you know, when they see someone in your situation, you know, how did it happen, what happened, what have they lived their whole life like this um, and all of that. Um, I guess one question I want to ask is, you know, did you play sports when you were younger? Like what was your active life before the accident? I grew up playing softball and ran track and field and played volleyball in high school. But my main source of physical activity was hiking. I grew up hiking Mount Washington with my family. I've hiked Mount Washington 10 times. It was our family vacation every single summer. And I kind of fell out of touch with hiking in college, but after I graduated, I set on a mission to do the 50 best day hikes in Connecticut. I had this book that my dad had given me, and I started down the list and was checking them off one by one. And I got through the first four or five of them before I left for Mexico, where I had my injury. So I was a little disappointed that I wasn't able to continue that passion of hiking, but I've found other sports that I can do to fulfill that since then. <laughs> to think about how common some of these accidents are and the situations that people like yourself are in that anyone could be in you know it's not something that's wild and you know out of place for you know it could really happen to anyone as somebody who was so into hiking and doing all these really fun adventures people are really surprised by the way I had my accident it was just so something so simple as falling off a balcony from sitting on a railing something people do all the time. The one thing that we all have in common is the desire to be loved and, you know, find love. So, you know, it's not always easy in this swipe left, swipe right culture. Um, you know, even for able-bodied people when they don't have anything really against them for it, I couldn't even imagine having to have this whole, you know, life turn upside down and then having to throw dating into it. I mean, it's already like terrible and hard. Um, so just tell us like a little bit about like what it was like, you know, after, after your accident. You know, while being paralyzed has affected almost every single aspect of my life since my injury, one part that it hasn't affected too much has been dating. It's really relatively similar to how it was before. And 
it's been a pretty good experience, shockingly. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm pumped for you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So after spending two months in the hospital, I was bored out of my mind and finally able to get home and had my fill of watching Netflix, which I never thought I would be able to do, and wanted to push myself to get back out there and see what the dating life would be like from here on out. So I sat down and came up with a funny bio with my friends and uploaded it to my Bumble account and by the time I woke up in the morning I had text messages from my friends saying that my profile was on Barstool. I was a little nervous about what guys reactions would be. I didn't know what my reaction would be as somebody on the other side of this. But I was shocked to find out that I was getting just as many matches as I was before. I had been on Bumble and Hinge basically since I had graduated from college. I've been single for several years and was obviously very apprehensive about getting back onto it and what guys would say, if they would be rude or mean or nasty and kind of judgy, but I was so surprised to find out people were genuinely nice and curious about what happened to me and interested in getting to know me as a person without really paying too much attention to my wheelchair at all. I found that most guys actually had a really great sense of humor about this whole situation. Uh, what's your number? Not <laughs> Not like, not like your phone number, like your, your guy number dating. I've been out with 21 guys since my injury. That's definitely more guys than I've ever dated in my entire life, so you're doing pretty well. Thank you. But who's counting? So what about the obvious? You know, in the beginning you couldn't drive, you have a friend drop you off on a date. Um, what do guys say? What do guys do? Like, do they address the elephant in the room? Do they talk to you about it? Uh, is it not talked about? So each situation is pretty different. Um, but the first date I went on after my injury, my best friend dropped me off and tried to walk me to the door like she was being my, she was my mom. She was, I was mortified. I was like, no, drop me off at the end of the street. I'll roll down the way. Um, <laughs> But she insisted on making sure I got into the door by myself and the guy was really nice. We didn't exactly hit it off, but it was a great way to dip my foot back into the dating pool. Some guys, it's the first message that they send me after I give them my pickup line. What happened to you? Why are you in a wheelchair? What's wrong with you? Some guys wait for me to bring it up. I made it to a third date before <laughs> I acknowledged the fact that I was in a wheelchair. But most of the time it just comes up in conversation and a lot of guys are genuinely interested in learning more about what goes on with a spinal cord injury. And I think it's a great way to become more informed in all the different aspects of life. All right, you gotta spill the tea. You gotta give me some of your best stories. Alright, I've got a few of them. Um, the first guy who I went home with, there had been some drinking involved throughout the day and when we finally get back to his apartment, I find out he lived in this apartment building that was up two flights of stairs. There were about 20 steps to get even into the building, but he was totally fine with it. He didn't even try to take me out of my chair. He just bumped me up step by step. He was so strong, so it worked out really well for me. Um, but that was the first time I went home with somebody and I was a little nervous, um, but it, it, it worked out. Oh. Props, to, props to that guy for getting you up 20 flights of steps. I think this one might be my favorite uh, I was over a guy's house who I was dating and I had taken my Apple Watch off 
and threw it onto my chair. And when I got home later that night, I realized I didn't have my watch, so it must have fallen onto his floor. I texted him and asked him to look for it and he couldn't find it anywhere. So I was a little annoyed, but I just kind of blew it off. And at the end of the week, several days later, I went to go put on my shoes that I had worn that night and a couple of times since then and found my Apple Watch right inside. <laughs> because I can't feel my feet, so I didn't realize <laughs> that my it was in my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to send the text saying, hey, guess what I just found in my shoe? That's awesome. <laughs> he understood. Yeah, yeah. He gave me some shit about it, but it was... <laughs> That's awesome. That's my one of my favorite stories. Yeah. So I know a lot of the time, at least in my experience, it's, it's top, probably top question. It's uncomfortable for most people to talk about, um, but I think sometimes it's good for people to be educated about it. Um, you know, the lower half of the body, you know, how does it work? You know, you're having sex and, you know, interacting with these guys and um, it's just definitely a question that has to come up. Mm -hmm. So, surprisingly, it's very, like, functionality-wise, it's very similar mm -hmm. to how everything was before. Um, one of the main differences is the fact that I don't have full control of my bladder anymore and I can't sense when I have to go to the bathroom. So it's ended up with me wetting a couple of guys' bed. <laughs> <laughs> and they've all been surprisingly cool about it and super nice and don't make a big deal about it at all but that's one of the main differences because i could still get pregnant and have babies the normal way i did not know that yeah yeah that's interesting yeah yep that was one of the first things that the doctors told me in the hospital you can still have sex you can still have babies you could still wow. be a mom Hmm. That's incredible. I liked it in. I had no yeah. clue. Huh. That's wild because like then you have to like worry about I, I mean I would be concerned about these guys like what if like because you like won't know if they like have a condom on yes. or like. Yeah. So that's one thing I tried to make pretty clear <laughs> in the beginning like no I could like you still have to use protection like everything still works down there like maybe i can't feel it the normal way but it's you still yeah. got to be careful wrap it up um, if you could give advice to you know someone in your situation or you know anyone that is struggling with dating um you know what would be the best advice that you could give to them it takes baby steps or baby rolls in my case to allow yourself to really feel comfortable with somebody but I've learned that as long as there's an open line of communication and honesty and humor on both ends, you can get through just about anything. The way I see it, we all have our own challenges. Some of us can hide them. Others are the first thing you see when you look at somebody. You just have to learn to roll with them. <laughs> Hi, Dad. They're just being slowed in here. So we're at the For the haters, for the haters, come on to it now or later. Whoa, uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 
It don't matter what your name is Share your story, girl, be waiting Come up, 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 yeah For the haters, whoa